It's better. <laughs> Camera backwards. That was a good start. Hey guys. This is just going to be a quick 10 minute catch up we use. Um, as you can hear, I've got the spirit box room in the background. Um, I just felt inspired just to do this for 10 minutes today. I don't know why. Quite often, they like to put ideas in your head. So, thanks for joining. Quick 10 minutes uh, spirit box. Um, let's see. Let's see who's in the room today. I'll just give them a minute to, to turn up. Hope you're all really good, okay, by the way. Um, so lovely to see you. Um, I know it's been like a week or so since I've done one of these, um, but I've been really busy, snowed under with work, good work, so you know, it's a good thing, it's a good thing. Alright, so just while we're waiting then, um, if I just shout out to the, any spirits who want to come forward today, just for a quick 10-15 minutes, if you want to use this device that you've been using before, use a spirit box. And tell us anything that you want to tell us today. Um, if this is the little girl who has been following me about, if we can continue the session. Uh, incidentally, guys, um, the last video that I put on YouTube um, was the last live stream that we did. Um, there's some good answers on there. We've got some good replies and some interesting, interesting replies from the little girl. Um, when asked why is she following me, it's apparently because she feels safe. Um, and because I'm friendly. It's nice, isn't it? Alright little girl, come forward, don't be shy. I know it's not 3am or anything like that. Use this device. Let's uh, play the game we normally play. If you give me your name, I think I've just heard Alex there. Give you my name, thank you very much for that. We'll try and continue where we left off last time. So... <laughs> See you. Hello. You're right there. So you told me last time that you didn't want to leave. You felt safe with me. I was friendly, um, and that you you like to be in one particular place. That's about, that's how far we got last time. Okay. So when you say that I, I make you feel safe. What do I make you feel safe from? What do you make you feel safe from? Howdy from Canada. Hey, Canada. Very nice to see you here. Thank you very much for dropping by. This is just a quick 10 minutes, five, 10 minutes. So I've got to go and uh, pick my daughter up from school in about 10 minutes, so. I tend to do these spirit boxes all wrong. I just talk. And I forget that we're supposed to be listening to them. So, <laughs> I'll shut me mouth a bit. Sweet oblivion. Hello. This is just a 10 minute one uh, before I pop off to the school run. Um, just to see if we can get anything from the little girl who's following us about again. Okay. All right. I'll shut my mouth. I've got an accent that sounds awesome. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I certainly have an accent. Um, it doesn't appeal to all. I think it's an acquired taste. But thank you very much. <laughs> Alright. Okay, sorry little girl if you were trying to talk to us. So we need to continue where we left off. So you come forward, speak to this spirit box. If you speak to the guys who've come to Instagram to listen to you today. We've got a few messages last time on Instagram. It was very, very interesting. Am I in Scotland? No, I do sound quite Scottish. Which is to someone who's not from round here. I'm from the northeast of England, a place called Newcastle. We're very close to Scotland, so that's why we've got a bit, bit of a twang. Uh, you call us Geordies. Geordies, I know. But uh, I've been told the accent is very infitting with ghost communication. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. No, 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 honestly, you don't have to be sorry, I'm not offended. It's, it's literally, and I always drive away, so. I, mean, I feel like I'm being rude, I feel like she's trying to talk to me and I'm going to listen. We didn't get a name for her last time, we got, we're getting things about her, but we don't know what her name is yet. Um, when I went down to the gravestone, um, and her name's rubbed out, but I do know that her mother's called Jane, 
and we got some we got some responses last time I said that so we'll try that we'll, we'll try starting there and um, for the next 10 minutes all right little girl if you hate a day we were talking a little bit last time about your mother Jane your mother that's right so we said well I asked how does your mother Jane feel about you following me about and you said that she liked me so I had no idea you did spirit boxes I've had my own ghost experience twice where I saw full body full bodied apparitions love it love it you need to let me know about that you have to just tell me the lot all of it um, yeah yeah um, I mean you know I do a lot of the occult stuff we do paranormal investigations we go to locations as well part of it we do um, spirit boxes it's quite a new part of it but they seem to work and we're getting some good intelligent conversations so brilliant you know uh, can anyone purchase spirit box and yes uh, is it protected circle great but well okay so protected circles are only only really required if you if you feel they're required now I know I get a lot of backlash with this but the way I work with spirit is I don't protect myself from the spirits I invite them I invite them into my space Um, through a sort of a, a mutual respect sort of thing, so I don't fear them. Uh, much the same as when we're doing um, sort of like demonic work, I invite them into my space. If there is ever a protective circle, it'll be to keep other leech entities out of the circle while we're working. If we're doing any particular spell work or um, meditation work, quite often I'll invite them in just to sit and meditate with me, uh, which is an interesting experience depending on who comes through um, but that's kind of the other side of the work as far as a spirit box goes normally what I do is I just make sure I've got the right energy um, and if I actually shut my mouth for two seconds they normally come through and talk <laughs> right I mean she might not come through today because this is a bit impromptu this one to be, I haven't really warmed the room up too much normally I would sit meditate for a little bit you know get some get some incense going uh, let's have a look I'll do I'm going to send you some voice clips I'm also an empath brilliant uh, so special sensing traits I've been obsessed with paranormal since the age of nine uh, so now for 30 years uh, well I'm very glad that you followed us I love every single one of my followers because you're very, very, very important. Because without people following us, what's the point of me even putting stuff on here? Um, if you don't already, um, jump on my YouTube. Uh, the link will be in my uh, in my bio on here. Um, usually, I sort of have longer videos. That's where I'll put the actual ghost investigations, um, and there's a few other things, a few other occulty things in there. We've got some hypnosis, uh, which I need to write a few more hypnosis um, scripts out actually. So I'll get on that. Um, but yeah, dive on there, see if you like it. Um, if you don't, well, unfollow. <laughs> um, as far as being an empath though, uh, I'm clairsentient, so I can feel the energy changes, uh, the emotional changes, which comes in handy a great deal when I'm doing um, invocations and things like that. Um, so you can certainly tell when the spirits come into the room, because the, I mean, the, 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 the sort of physical energy changes are absolutely... I mean, you'll know yourself for being an empath. You know when someone walks in the room, it's just night and day, it's crazy. It's very interesting, I love it. Right, OK, so um, I'm conscious of the time. I know this is not like a normal hour-long hour -long session. I'm going to give it about another five minutes. Um, excuse me if I shut my mouth just for a quick minute, because I just want to see if there is anyone speaking on the box today. All right. So, very quickly, the little girl that's been following me around, who we still don't know a bloody name. Yes, thank you. That's the cat, don't worry, I haven't got a ghost cat kicking about. It's not my cat, I'm not a fan. Um, come forward, just for the guys that's turned up now. If you could say, if you could repeat any of their names on the screen, that would be really spooky and they would probably love it. If you can say Alex.
Now, bear in mind that these noises coming through are not all spirit. Um, it's the way the app works is there's a lot of um, phonics, a lot of sounds, which are going to be on a loop. None of the sounds are actually words. So if you hear any words come through, that's supposedly being formulated by spirit. Um, this kind of technology has been going on for a long time. Um, I'm kind of 85, 90% convinced, just because I've had intelligent conversation through it. Okay, so there you go. Now, so come on, little girl, come forward and prove to me. Not that you need to prove, is because she creeps around the house at night and scares everyone shitless. Can you tell me the year that you died? Now, we all know that you died in a house fire with your two. I think one was a brother, one was a sister. Died, that's right, you did. How did you die? You've told us before how you died. Come on. Dead, but we know you're dead. Come on, you've used this box before, you've, you, you're much better than this, come on. Mm-hmm. Or would you like to tell me in Instagram why you follow me about again? Just to clarify, let's see if we get the same answer. So why are you intent on following me about? Now it's really hard to pick these out live. Uh, normally what I do is I'll save this, go back in and edit and listen to it and uh, you see on my last videos where I can actually hear what they say. Uh, Alright, now that was weird. There was a voice came through but it wasn't from the spirit box. <laughs> And I'm on my own. That's new. Okay, right. Spiritual workings. Hello. How critical is time? What do you mean, how critical is time? As in, how much time do you need? Um, normally, I like to warm the room up for about an hour. Because, um, and then they'll start coming in. Oh, Phil. Thanks, mate. This is... Very, very quick, very, very quick stream. Just about to go and pick the bear up and I'll sort of do a quick 10 minutes. Just to touch base with these guys. I feel like I neglect Instagram sometimes. Um, hope I'm well. I'm very, very well. I hope you're well. I'll just like to say you're in the stream. Love it when everyone turns up. Should it be used at night time specifically? No, um, spirit boxes can be used at any time of the day. It doesn't matter. Um, they're always around us. Now, granted, in fact, what I'll do is I'll turn this off because I'm being very rude and I'm not listening to her when she's trying to talk to us. Um, you can use it through the day. I think at night time, um, certain entities do prefer it. Um, I don't know if it's because it's quieter and um, there's a lot of spirits that are scared off by noise. Um, but I think it's more so a case of how long you spend working with them, that you've got to almost train them. Uh, like we've been using this spirit box for a couple of months now, um, with the same things that are coming in. This this girl that's following us about. So you, you're kind of training them to get the sounds and manipulate the sounds and make the words. Um, so they do get better. And what you find is over practice, they do say different words. Uh, you hear things that you haven't heard before. So you know for a fact that it's not just the sound bank spewing words out at you because there's no words in there. It is fascinating. Um, there's a couple of other ones that I'm going to use which um, use white noise. Um, so that you know for sure any words that come through are, um, well, you know, aren't something that's coming out with the machine. Um, it's absolutely fascinating. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, to, to be honest, jumping on for 10 minutes here and there and asking them to come forward and talk to you, chances of that's a little bit slim. Um, but I was, I mean, you never know, you know. I'll go back and I'll have a very quick listen later on, see if there's any intelligent responses come through. Um, what you may find is whenever I do these sessions, I tend to ask the same questions 
over and over again because I like to see if I can get the same responses because if we get the same responses every time the same questions that kind of proves some kind of intelligent communication um, so, th- so as I said to reiterate what we've discovered so far about the girl who follows from the graveyard um, she follows me because she feels safe um, f- f- what she feels safe from I don't know um, she doesn't want to leave and uh, she says that she likes to stay in one place. I'm not too sure about that one though, because um, she creeps around this house at night. That whenever I go on an investigation, she follows us on the investigations and jumps on the equipment, and we'll get messages and we'll get like K2 readings when we say come forward, etc., etc., and we'll say, oh, who's this? Who's this? And then when we say is it the little girl, this thing goes to red. So it's I don't know. I mean, I just want to know why why she's following us about. I want to know what we can do to help her. Um, you know, uh, but the thing is, if she was alive and she was a little girl, she's going to be shy. So I'm giving her a lot of space and time. And I've got a lot of patience to try and work out what's going on. But hey, I mean, this is the thing with investigations, especially when it's one that's following you about. You've got to give it time and you've just got to join the dots and just see what's at the other end but in the meantime um, I am trying to go and do other investigations fingers crossed she won't follow and uh, sabotage them um, I was down the Cooperage pub just the other night um, I'll tell you why I was there though actually um, I was going back down to the dungeon to do a spirit box session down there funnily enough because we haven't done a spirit box session in the dungeon yet um, one of the main reasons and I know there's loads of spirits that's been down there for like hundreds and hundreds of years but um, someone recently died in the dungeon because <laughs> it's like open top and it's like a pit so I think what's happened is is they've been on the drink they've leaned over the fence and they fell down and it's about a 12 to 15 foot drop they've probably landed on the head insta died they probably don't even know the dead. Um, out of interest and curiosity, because I didn't know the name of the guy, and um, it wasn't reported in the papers or anything like that. I was going to go down and see if I could get his name on an EVP or over the camera or anywhere like that or a spirit box, uh, but just because just, cause that would well, be fucking fascinating, wouldn't it? Really? Um, did you have specific experience um, that led you to the paranormal world and spirits? Um, how old were you? Um, ever since I was a kid. Ever since I was a kid, to be honest, I've always had experiences, um, as we all do when we're kids, because you, you haven't got the filter that's built in. We, we, we kind of get the filter that's programmed into us over time. Um, but then, like everybody else, I kind of went away and did my thing. You know, as you're, you're, you're a teen, you're into different things, you forget about it. Um, but then I got into um, sport, obviously, uh, martial arts, which led me to meditation. Um, meditation led me, led me to learning about... Um, spirit, spirit evolution, different levels of consciousness, and then it's gone full circle, somehow, to the, the occult. <laughs> um, speaking of spirits, um, you know, different forms of, of magic and different forms of spiritualism. It's all, you know, it's, it's all part of the same thing, um, different people's interpretations of the same thing. Uh, yeah, but, but yeah, mega interesting, isn't it? Um, have you ever been contacted by an evil spirit? Evil is a subjective term, isn't it? So it's... I've, I mean, I, I, yes, I've had a few things come to me um, uninvited. Um, I'm not going to say that they were evil. I might just say that their intention was slightly different than mine. But everybody's got a difference of opinion. So what we did is we just kind of like agreed to differ. And off they fucked, sort of thing. Um, I've had Astaroth... Um, came to me one night, now this was last year, very interesting, uh, last year I had, if you've ever heard of them, I had two months of a thing called cluster headaches, now this is a horrible, I mean it's not really related to what we're doing here, but it's a horrible thing, with a trigeminal nerve at the back of the eye, in flames, and it's supposedly the most pain a human can endure, um, without dying, according to the doctors. Um, it's like someone getting a hot poker and stabbing it in the back of the eye for 20 minutes and you get this about five times a day 
Um, so it was a really, really shitty time. Um, now, this went on for a few weeks. I was at my wit's end. Um, and then lying in bed one night, lying awake because you can't sleep, um, was drifting off. And uh, Master Roth turned up and got rid of my pain, like that. Um, interestingly enough, Astaroth appeared as a, a very motherly figure, um, a, a female motherly figure, contrary to the writings in the Goetia where Astaroth's like a very masculine, aggressive figure. Um, yeah, so like it was after that night the pain went. Um, just said, I'm going to give you a break, I'll get rid of the pain for you. Um, and then it was gone. I um, haven't had it since. So that was that was roughly a year ago, so fingers crossed it never comes back. Um, clear abilities. Uh, I'm starting to just know things before they happen and say songs before they play. Well, there you go, that's your intuition starting. That's when you're starting to pick up on things. Just keep working with it, keep practicing with it, and I promise you, um, you will develop. You just will. You can't. Once you start the ball rolling, it just does it. Um, and if you're interested, and if you try and speak to spirit or whatever you want to call them, things on a different frequency, if you, if you open yourself up to them, it's all about focus, all right? It's all about focus. You've got to just let them, you tune into them with your intention, and that's how you get them in. I don't know altogether how it works on their side, but I just it seems that every time you focus on them, they come forward. Now, this manifests itself in... Experience with your body, with your energy, emotions, things like that changing. Um, you can actually, uh, like when we're doing investigations and we're using like things like the KT meet, two meter and all that. Um, for example, if you go and have a look at them, a couple of the dun the first dungeon videos on YouTube, when we're in the pit, uh, when I was, there was me there on my own, I've been there with um, a lad called John, because he's like an impartial, he's a skeptic, brought him down. Um, whenever we were just talking about random crap, nothing was happening. Um, whenever we started thinking and talking about the dead people who died in that particular dungeon hundreds of years ago, they jumped on this by like on command. You know, we'd be like, right, if you if you're here, come forward. This thing will be on red. We'd, we'd say a step back. You know, but um, yeah, jump on YouTube, have a look at the videos. You tell me what you think of them because this is all an ongoing investigation that I really want everybody else to be involved in as well. That's the whole idea of this page and the YouTube page as well. You know, I'm the daft idiot that goes out to all these horrifically scary places. Um, I take a camera, show you what I find, and then we discuss and sort of pick it apart. And then you tell me what you think of it, basically. So, yeah. Um, Favourite experience has to be Chillingham Castle in terms of ghosts. That kind of experience. Um, I mean, my favourite spiritual experience has got to be every time I invoke any kind of an entity. Of the, of the Croatia because that blows my mind every time but Chillingham Castle um, I've been there I've spent about 20 hours in there in the dark um, in the middle of the night it's one of the most haunted castles in the world if not the haunted, most, most haunted castle um, it's terrifying <laughs> it's terrifying but in a good way um, let me just check the time there right I've got 10 minutes so you um, the, the, the most scary part of the whole experience which I've mentioned so many times because it was absolutely terrifying um, bear in mind, all the way through the castle, we were getting cups thrown at us, um, disembodied voices, answering questions intelligently, etc. Um, this particular room that we went into, the King Edwards, is a group of ten of us, so everyone experienced the same thing, but it was fo it was focused at me, interestingly enough. Um, so, <laughs> so we went to the King Edward room. It's very You can't see your hand in front of your face, it's pitch black darkness. Uh, what we'd just done the Ouija board for about 20 minutes, which was flying round. Um, and <laughs> we were sitting there just talking away. So if anyone's here, come forward, make noise, all the usual stuff. And I see a blue glow in the corner of this room, of the you know this this ancient room. Um, though I'm not really one for orbs and things like that. I mean, I thought it was all bullshit that part of it. And I see this blue orb in the corner of the room. So I'm like, well, is anybody over there with a smartwatch on? Has anybody got the phone on or a torch? Right, well, there was nobody sat there. Um, so this ball gets bigger, floats into the air, then disappears. Um, and then this big giant black thing swoops across the room and growls in my face. 
uh, <laughs> and it was the most horrific non-human animal type growl. Everybody in the room heard it, and everybody in the room shit themselves. So, you know, sorry, I'm I'm missing out on you. What is he saying? Here? Let me just backtrack. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Right, um, is that most haunted show faked? Personally, um, I think it is 80% fake. Now, I'm not speaking from experience, because I didn't make the show. Um, I think they very much go over the top. <laughs> like, do you know what, it, 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 all of these haunted shows, not all of them, but a lot of the mainstream haunted shows are absolutely pathetic. Like, I know I've said this before, but I, I'll prove it, because I go to these places and I don't run away like it fucking snowflake you know they go to these places to find dead people right so they go there with all this equipment and all this there's about 10 of them there's a big squad of them something happens like a knock on a wall they all scream and then run out the door what, where, what are you gonna what are you gonna find there you know so <laughs> yeah so i think a lot of them are fake in fact i think the most haunted lot got caught fake in one of the um one of the videos i think don't quote us on that, but you can search that. Most haunted fake. I think there's a, a one where the the girl, a vet, was seen to kick um, or knock a pan or something. There's like hanging pans. I don't know, I could be wrong, but that, that seems to ring a bell. Uh, but I guarantee you anything that I do uh, is 100% not faked because what would be the point in that? If it was fake, whenever I go somewhere, I'd have things flying across the room, I'd have light shows the lot. You know, you know, there's quite often that I spend hours sitting there in the dark with absolutely nothing happening. Um, because nobody wants to come forward. I mean, bloody hell, they're just like people. You can't just say, Shh, you know, come and speak to us. You know, if, if, if they don't want to speak to you, they won't. Um, but that's when, it, you know, the meditation comes in. That's where what we're finding consistently is that when you sit and you focus and you meditate. In fact, they even came over the spirit box one time and said, um, I, I asked if they want me to meditate. This was the one that I did in the bedroom. Um, I asked, I'm going to meditate now. Does that help with you? And the spirit box said, meditate. I mean, what's the chances of that? So <laughs> I'll take that as a yes. But it makes sense, doesn't it? Because the amount of energy that you can create when you meditate, anyone that does it, if you do it properly, you know you just literally buzzing with just energy you know your frequency changes and you know and if you're focused on the entity that you're trying to get to come through your frequency probably matches theirs um much the same as when you're doing uh invocations you know if you've ever invoked a spirit and um, you know that you've got to match your frequency with theirs which is why you'll recite their n um like the the end that they'll give us anyone who's not familiar with that the likes of um, like, like Lucifer's, for example, um, Renishtasa, what is it? Renishtasa, Uberica, Biasa, Kai, Lucifer, just that anyway. So you, you, you would meditate on that, uh, you would meditate on their sigil, gets your point of focus on them, um, and then it helps you tune into their frequency, and you kind of thin the veil, and then you can communicate here. So I think what we're finding with our investigations is it's much the same with the spirit as well. Hiya Nat, thanks for jumping in Pev. Um, so you know, we, you'll focus on, if you know specifically who it is that you're there to see, if you know who resides in the building or area, think about them, focus on them, talk about them and they'll drop in. Um, they just do, it's like, it's like, it seems to be like 99.9% .9 of the time, you go there, you think about them, they turn up. Um, so the question lies then, how much of that is our own consciousness, bearing in mind that we're very powerful beings ourselves anyway, how much of that is our own consciousness manifesting the entity that we want to come down? Are we actually creating that entity? Are we creating the haunting ourselves? Now, I've got no doubt at all in my mind, because I've done it before, that you can actually make a place haunted yourself by your intention. There's various workings that you can do. Um, traditional witchcraft, I mean, it's very basic that you can actually make a place haunted. <laughs> you know, you can just, you can sigilise, you know, you can create entities, you can create servitors, and you can make them haunted place. Now, that's absolutely not something that I do, because that defeats the, the purpose of what I'm doing with the investigations that we're doing. 
um, but it is very very possible um, sounds crazy I know it does but it's this is sort of basic stuff you know if you go back and read you know read all these ancient anyway sure Alex talk crap <laughs> uh, yeah so anyway I've given one the the spirit box because um, I was just talking too much and to be honest I only had about 20 minutes anyway uh, thanks for answering my questions um, uh, this is made by insane <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just glad I've made you day you know I'm just glad I've made you happy um, yeah keep following jump on my YouTube um, I promise I'm going to put loads more content on there um, the problem that I'm having at the moment is a lot of these venues that I know are absolutely riddled with ghosts and spirits and all this carry on you've either got to pay a fortune to get in because you've got to hire them for the night which is fine you know I'll, I'll, I'll pay for them you know I'm hiring the castle and whatnot that that's perfectly fine um, or some of them you literally just can't get in touch with the owners and um, so we've got the likes of um, oh yeah I mean I digressed but I was saying about the the Cooperage um, pub in town it's an old Tudor building it's, it's got all the like the, the wood frame and you know, the thatching and all, well, probably had thatching at some point. It's a, it survived the Great Fire of Newcastle. Um, I went down there the other night just to walk around and sort of get a feel for the the building itself, and it's absolutely riddled. Like, the K2 metre just outside the door was kicking off. Um, the atmosphere is thick, you know. It's There's even a thing that haunts the alleyway to the side of it where there's a staircase going up. There's a, there's a, there's a man who... Um, walk something down there and I'm not surprised I'm gonna you know, it's so good I'm gonna do a video of just that particular staircase it's about a, a hundred meter long staircase and um, it's scary as hell and uh, I'm gonna see if I can catch this bloke walking up and down um, you know what is my YouTube channel um, same as well almost the same as the Instagram without the underscores so it's just Alex Alchemist if you go on my bio on my profile, um, there's a link on it at the bottom. Just click on it, it takes you there. It's a brand new channel, well, it's a brand new, it's only a couple of months old, um, so content will be getting put on there a lot more, a lot more frequently. I'm gonna try and do sort of a couple of videos a week if I can, and um, just as a lot of work goes into the, getting the videos, you know, going to these areas, you have got to spend all night there, you know, you've got to get the video, you've got to edit the video, and that takes all day in itself. And of course, I've got a day job. You know, so you've got to you've got to juggle it. I'm not complaining because I love what I'm doing, um, but just remember how long it takes to make these things. Um, and of course, I'm learning production value as well, so the quality of the videos are going to be getting better every time. I hope. <laughs> um, I'll binge watch your YouTube now and then DM you my thoughts. Plus, share my two separate. Oh yes, yes. Two full. Bleh, 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 I got excited there. I couldn't speak. <laughs> full body operation experiences please do that I mean you know your, your feedback is the most important thing for me so what I need to know you know is just like tell me the kind of places that you want me to go to tell me the things that you want me to focus on you know I mean maybe paranormal things is not what you want you know like you don't want me to speak to dead people do you want me to focus more on um, other spirits you know like the spirits of the creation and things like that um, do you want me to focus more on the power of intention manifestation um, I mean, I've touched on that slightly with earlier videos as well. I will be doing some more on that because I want this channel not just to be about paranormal investigations. I want it to be about all aspects of what we can do as, as you know, as spiritual beings and super clever motherfuckers, basically. <laughs> Can't wait to check out more of it. Oh, I really appreciate it. No one, do you know what? I'm, I'm thrilled when people watch my stuff and like it. Like it does, it it's an absolute thrill. It's a buzz, you know. Sometimes I wonder why people want to watch me run around in this dark, haunted place. Sometimes talking absolute crap, often talking crap. <laughs> but what I can say is, I seem to get a lot more activity than a lot of people when I go to places. Um, more right no watch a couple of my YouTube where we're in the pit, right? Tell me any other haunted show, any other mainstream haunted show that has had the K2 meter kicking off on orange or green for like a full hour, or on command, as powerful as, as, as I do when I'm there. Alright? 
you know, find a video where they do. Because what I've been finding, even a lot of the YouTubers as well, they'll go on there. It's if they care to me, if so much, so much as sniffs, they're like jumping for joy and they're all excited. And I'm like, well, that's nothing. You know, first it wasn't intelligent. You know, you didn't say come forward now, and it came forward. And secondly, it wasn't lit up like a Christmas tree for hours. So I don't know. Maybe it's because I spend a lot of work with spirit. I spend a lot of time working with spirit. Maybe we can just kind of channel them in. I don't know. But that's what this is all about. Ongoing investigations. It's to learn about how to make these things better. Share with everybody. You share with me. If you have an idea, I'll go out and do it. And uh, hopefully I won't get murdered doing it. <laughs> so, right. Uh, I've got about five minutes. Uh, you're also obsessed with all things from the UK and England. Well, that helps, because I'm from England. Um, as in, my mum visited UK, England, Scotland and Wales while pregnant with me. I always tell her I wish... <laughs> right, well... I'm quite British. Quite British. But I, as before, everybody thinks I'm uh, Scottish. Because I'm from the North East. If you're not from round here... I mean, obviously we sound completely different than everybody from Scotland, but anybody from different countries are like, Ah, you're Scottish. Are you Welsh? I don't mind either, you know. I'd rather sound like this than a posh lad from down London or something. Um, I can't speak for anyone else, but your content interests me and lets me know I'm not the only one who hears voices. You're absolutely not the only one. Well, I, in terms of hearing voices, the only actual audible voices I've heard in my normal ears, apart from, like, you know, stuff, my normal ears, how many pairs of ears have I got, is um, dead people. So disembodied voices, but when it comes to things like um, uh, ritual working and demonic working, um, I haven't heard their audible voices. Um, they they usually speak through uh, dreams, waking dreams, visions, um, emotional changes, sometimes physical things moving around, which is pretty uh, pretty creepy at the time. But you know, if you know who it is, it doesn't scare you at all. It's fine. Um, I absolutely know without a doubt uh, that you're legit and now I'm an instant fan for life. Well, do you know what? That's the best thing I've heard all day. You've absolutely made me do. Thank you very much. Really, really appreciate that. You don't know how much I appreciate that. And I'll keep banging about it. But it's it's far too easy to put stuff on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok and all that and uh, not be noticed because of the algorithms. You know, it's very frustrating sometimes when you, you go to these places and you, you put on what you think is, is good content and you're getting kind of things on camera that no one else is getting, but nobody can see it simply because the algorithm doesn't put you in front of people. You know, it doesn't really do a quality check or a content check. It just goes, all right, this person's been on YouTube for like years, whatever, we'll bang them in front of millions of people. This person's quite new. He's going to have to fight for his life to get in front of anybody. So, you know, that's the struggle that we're going to have um, short term. But I am going to stick at it because I know this is a grind and um, hopefully we'll have a huge community of like-minded people like yourselves who, you know, we can all work together. And what we'll, we'll try and do is come up with some evidence or come up with some some knowledge that hasn't come to light yet, right? And I don't want to just do... This is not just for fun. Like, we're going to do this to try and advance this field of research. Um, you know, like the school group, for example, I posted something about the school group before. They did quite a lot of good work with like the ITC uh, work, spirit boxes and things. I'd like to continue that side of it as well. Um, you know, the actual magical side of it, the ritual side of it, uh, the medium type side of it, um, all of it really. But I want to advance it, you know. So I want all these channels that I've got to be to be like an actual log of uh, if I manage to bring that on. Um, have you ever had a spirit visit? Uh, you whom's family member or a friend that passed on not as yet not as yet an interesting question though because um, I was thinking about this just the other day and thinking I should probably uh, well try and try and invite somebody in because um, that would be interesting wouldn't it you know, especially if I can get a name of a relative come over on a spirit box or on a, on the Ouija board um, something like that um, I'm starting to take the EVP record route on investigations now, so we can get some body, uh, some voices on the EVP if we can't hear them with our ears or over the normal camera. So that's going to be interesting. Um, haven't tried automatic writing. It's definitely on the list. One million percent. I've been procrastinating with that one quite a bit. Um, I've never seen anybody do it um, successfully. 
Um, but I know it's real because it, well, it, well, I don't know. I shouldn't say that. You don't know something's real unless you've done it yourself. So, like the like the Ouija board, I didn't know that was real until I did it at Tilly Castle, and it was going around like crazy, spelling everyone's names and scaring everyone a bit. So it was, it was hilarious. It was really, really good. All right, um, I, as much as I love you, I have to go now because um, I'm on the school run today and I've got a kid to pick up in five minutes across the road. Um, so, sorry to cut this short. I'll jump on again as soon as I can, OK? I must definitely promote you via my well, Instagram page. That, that alone is the biggest praise. If you're willing to promote me on your page, you're an absolute legend. I really, really appreciate that. Um, wish you had more followers. Uh, so I got to expose you, man. Oh, wish you had more followers, yeah. 210 also building up for maybe amazing things start small right you know everyone starts from one follower and then all you've got to do is just keep going at it and before you know it you know you've got a couple of thousand and then from there it just snowballs and, and then you've got too many to follow too many to keep a track of well that's what I'm hoping anyway and um, if you ever need help with it let me know if you ever need help uh, well I always need help look at us <laughs> Constant help. You know, this has made my entire twenty twenty thus far. I can't thank you enough. Well, if you think this has made you twenty twenty, you haven't seen anything yet. Shit's gonna get crazy. I've got some insane content on the way. I'm working behind the scenes to try and get into some absolutely horrific places that I know you're gonna love. The difference is when I get into these horrific places, I'm gonna do some horrific things. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just not going to run around like an absolute jayfish, being scared. We're going to sit and we're going to let everything come to us. And we're just going to see how far we can take it. And we're going to encourage them. And when things start getting thrown at us and, you know, I think clothes getting pulled and growled at, we're just going to sit and, be, and just let it go and do what everyone else doesn't do and see how much we can make them do. Right? If I've got to tie people down, if I've got to tie people to chairs while it's happening, I'll do that. All right. I mean, it's it's okay for me because when things start jumping out and scaring us, my legs go to jelly anyway, and I can't run, so <laughs> I'll just let it happen. Right, lovies, lovies, lovies. These are absolutely amazing. The best possible community I could wish for. Like, the thing I love about my channel is I'm attracting the most like intelligent, level-headed, open-minded people ever, and it's like it's not like usual internet people who are absolute idiots. Like, you are absolutely fantastic. Right, got to go, because I'm going to get killed if I don't pick the kid up. Um, love yous, I'll speak yous as soon as I can, all right? Let's carry this on. Love yous all. Take it easy.